Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be further going through with our AWS uh, series that we're going through, which is CCP, Certified Cloud Practitioner. And this is the practical part. Although you don't need practical for the exam itself, you can actually clear the exam with the flying colors just with the theoretical knowledge that we have already covered. But I think it's a great addition since you will be working in the cloud and you don't have the cloud real knowledge, then it's often a good use. So we will be going through with the practical implementation and we'll be spinning up our instances, the VM, or you can say the machines, whatever you like to call. I usually prefer to call them as instances. And only advice is don't forget to shut them down. You really need to manually delete them to actually not get billed. Uh, but don't worry, it's not too heavily billed. And if you are the very first time creating an account, you already get one year of free. There's a lot of free access available. I don't have it, sadly, because my account is way old than one year. So we'll not be going through with that. Uh, by the way, there is also a comment target for this video. Uh, just 250 comments. That's it. I hope you can give me at least this much of motivation for the content that I'm putting up on the YouTube. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of preparation. And I think that's uh, you can motivate me more by just putting the comments. So go ahead and do that. 250 comment target. Uh, I hope we can achieve that within 24 hours. So let's go ahead and let me share the screen. So we are into the console home. This is exactly how it looks like. Uh, by the way, you can also ask questions to Amazon Q, which is a recently integrated chatbot. You can just press this icon. I ask this Q a lot of questions. <laughs> it's fun to just ask how much it is updated and whatnot and all these things. I'll just go ahead and move this a little bit here so that we can see entire thing fully. I think that's a good view. All right. Uh, I think that's all I can move. Can I shrink myself a little? Yep, I can. All right. Uh, looks good. So this is our first application view. And in order to launch any EC2 or anything like that, you just have to search for EC2. The first time you'd search for it, after that, you'll be able to see that in the recent tabs as well, regardless of how you actually land it up there. Just go ahead and click on EC2. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't notice, it actually mentions all of this virtual servers in the cloud servers. Yeah, the machines instances. So it actually mentions exactly that virtual servers in the cloud. Okay, uh, by the way, this is the first look of it. And by the way, on the left hand side is where you should be looking up for the very first time when you are opening any such uh, panel or machines like that. Okay, uh, first thing, first tip is these days EC2 actually gives you this global view, which is fairly a new uh, addition into this one. Any machine that you create, let's just say in the US East one region, the moment you actually migrate to another region like AP South one, those machines are running but will not be shown to you because you are in a different region. So machines are actually tied up to the region. I uh, will uh, we'll actually work through more about it. So in here you can see that there is instance and you can also check for instance types. What are all the types of instances which are available here? Uh, we will definitely go ahead and talk more about it. It will probably take a couple of seconds because there are a lot of types which are available. Uh, T2 micro, but I hope you can see there's a lot of them. Uh, so I'll just scroll this and you can see the, the amount of machines that are available. Actually, it's so much and you can see some of them. You have great virtual CPUs and all of these. I'll actually walk you through later on. Some of them even have the 36 of virtual CPUs and memory. It can go up to 60 GBs and 144 GB, 192 GB. That's that's too much. So these are instance type. There can also be launch templates. Uh, we haven't created any templates. These are just machines which you can use. These are pre-cooked machine in which things are already there, configured and whatnot. You can also do a spot request. Uh, spot requests are something like these machines have no such guarantee that it would always be running. Uh, they are fault tolerant. They might get shut down. Uh, we have the saving plans option as well. Like how do you want to save flexible, significant and the highest discount you'll be getting in the reserved instance. When you make any reserved instance, that means you are upfront saying that, hey, I'll be 100% uh, using these ones, so reserve these for me. And as the Amazon say, they can be lowered price up to 70%. I've even seen 75% of the discount uh, if you reserve them. If you know your application is now good, it's getting good traffic, and it will be there for next one year, you can do a reservation and can save so much of the plans. Okay. And then we have these images, also known as AMIs. So this is the point where you see the AMIs, Amazon uh, machine image. 
Uh, you can actually build your own images and save it up here as well. And there is also a catalog, some of the machines being built by the uh, people folks, like Red Hat folks, some configurations are done. And there is even a marketplace of these places. Uh, a lot of things are configured and all, all whatnot. So for example, there is this uh, Woza streaming engine. Uh, I don't know, I haven't used this. <laughs> uh, there's Palo Alto, very famous one. A uh, lot of them, a lot of them. Even you'll find some of the configured machine for a lot of security works and a lot of other works. Anyways, uh, then we have the block storage. This actually defines what kind of storage will be used in your machines, uh, volumes and snapshots and whatnot. Then we have security groups. Uh, security is elastic IP uh, placement uh, placement groups where it, it needs to be placed in what AZs. Then we have load balancer and auto scaling. We'll talk about them later on. Anyways, uh, moving on to the EC2 dashboard. This is how you see it. Uh, this is where you can see all the running machines. Every single zone will have some of the AZs, as I mentioned, not zone. Every region will have the zones. So let's just say we are in the US East one. So it has all these zones till the F. So your machine can be in any of those zones. And similarly, if I go ahead and switch on to, let's just say Asia Pacific, now you'll see different view of it, entire view reloads. And now you can see only three of these uh, machines are there, AP South and all these ones. Uh, so every single zone has different area and different way of how to deal up with the things. And we'll be going with that. Anyways, now let's go ahead and start the launch instance. We don't have any uh, templates, so we'll just directly click on the launch instance. This is where you see a lot of stuff. Should I increase that? Yeah, this is where, this is how you'll be seeing it. I think that's enough. Okay, so how do you want to launch an instance? I want to launch one instance or you can launch 10 instances at the same time. Uh, these are the default settings that it goes on. And of course it mentions that uh, you have the free tier if you are in the first tier. 750 hours is too much, 42 micro. Uh, so let's go ahead. So I'll just call this one as uh, my machine one that's fair name now in the next step you can choose up any of the catalog there are thousands of os applications and images for that you can choose mac ubuntu and all of that i'll be choosing the amazon linux this is the newest version of it which is 2023 i have done so many tutorials and teaching based on the amazon linux 2 which was the previous updated version but now i choose everything for this one uh, this is an amazon version, customized version of Linux. It has some of the utilities already installed like AWS. You can just literally sign into it and say AWS configure, no need to install anything. And that's good. Couple of architecture options are available uh, for the ARM or 86. We'll just go with the default one. Uh, this is my AMI ID, Amazon machine ID. Every single thing has a unique ID in the AWS. This is how we go for it. The instance type, this is where you choose your hardware. And these are free tier eligible T2 micro. If I just go up here, you can see there are so many of them. Uh, these are uh, free tiers. I'll just say all generation. Now let's go ahead and look for it. And now you can see, just look at the scroll bar, how small that is. And you can go for the crazy machines. Like if I go a little bit scroll, uh, these are not even available for me yet. I need to configure it. Uh, but if I choose, let's just say C6A 24X large, it gives me 96 CPUs and 192 GB of memory. If I install SUSE Linux, it will cost me 3.797 USD per hour or 3.802 USD per hour if I install uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I can use Windows and Linux. There's so many options available here. Uh, but we'll go for the T2 Micro, which gives me one virtual CPU, one GB of RAM memory, good enough to present the demonstrations. You can use T1 Micro, T2 Nano, T2 Micro, T2 Small. There's so many of them. Okay, we'll go with the one which is free tier eligible. Of course, you want to choose this one. Then comes with the key pair login. Remember in the notes, I told you that it actually generates a key pair and you have to actually store those key pairs and have to change the permission. This is exactly where it looks like. If you have already created, it will just look like this here. And if you just go ahead and click on create a new key pair, you can just enter the name and just keep it RSA and then you can download a PEM file or PPK file. PPK file is used for PuTTY in case you are using for Windows. If you're using SSH, go for the PEM file and make sure you change the permission. It is asked in exams as well and without this, you cannot actually log in. But I'll show you other ways to log in into these machines as well. They are fun, much more easier, but you can actually go ahead and try that. I'll not create that. I'll actually uh, just go without this so I don't need any machine, okay? And uh, 
Hmm. It used to say that you can actually uh, key pair to connect instance. I don't need it. I don't want to. But it's saying key pair name required. Anyways, we'll see that. Uh, then you can create a security group. This is almost like the IAM group. We have so many permissions and all of that. We can actually create and name it. Right now, we are saying that allow the SSH traffic. It's your machine. You have to open up port explicitly so that somebody can enter into your machine or can allow the HTTP traffic. So you have to based on that. So this will actually open up the port 18 in your machine. Uh, this will actually allow the traffic from, uh, this one is actually port uh, 443 for HTTPS. This is port 80. Uh, you don't need to memorize that. You can just check mark that. I'll only allow the SSH. Make sure you choose uh, anywhere. You can actually choose custom IP or my IP as well. I'll just choose anywhere I want to log in into this machine. Then you can choose how much the storage you need. I just need 8 GB of uh, GP3, which is a general purpose SSD. Uh, but you can choose machines which are highly configured for IOPS input output operations. Uh, I'll just use general purpose right now. But just this gives you actually information that yes, there are machines which are provisioned specially for IOPS uh, input output uh, input output operations and the fun part is actually in the advanced section if you click on the advanced section now it asks you a lot more questions the important thing for the exam and for the general purposes is, is here if you keep on scrolling at the very almost end first of all this is where you actually access the metadata this is you do the configuration for the metadata uh, right now it says v2 only but you can choose v1 and v2 only i'll show you the difference as well it requires just the token uh, in both the cases, the URL is exactly same. And then this is your user data. Just below this, there is a user data. So you can write literally your code up here that, hey, I want to update this machine. I want to install the web servers and all that. We probably will have later on demo for this one. And that's it. Uh, so at first, it looks like there's so much, but actually we didn't did much. We just explored the advanced section. That's it. And the rest of the things, we just kept it automatic apart from choosing the Amazon Linux and giving it a name. You can spin up two, three machines, five machines at the same time. Nobody's stopping you. And once you click on the launch instance, uh, it's not going to allow me before I create a key pair. So let's go ahead and do that, a fresh one. Uh, or I can choose proceed without the key pair. I don't need this one. Proceed without key pair. You can create your key pairs and just log in with the SSH, but I'll show you a couple of other ways. Now it will allow me to launch the instance. So there we go. And uh, creating the security group rules and all of that. And you can see how fast that is successfully initiated. And now you have own machines. Ah, that's nice. Let's click on view all instances and see this is your dashboard where you see all your instances. Uh, you can actually uh, filter them based on their running T2 micro status check and whatnot. Notice here this one was spinned up in US East one. And this is my public IPv4. This is my actual IP address. And I can just select this machine and based on the selection, this bottom menu is populated and gives me more information. Status, alarm, monitoring, security, like networking, uh, who is allowed, what ports are allowed, and all these things are actually here. And I can just search for storage. If you need to add attach more storage, you can do that. Here's the security. Here's the rule. What are the inbound rules and whatnot and all these things. So these are basics. And we can just look for the details up here. VPC IDs and whatnot. There's so much of information. Don't get bothered about it. Most of them, you won't be using it, uh, but let's go for it. Okay, uh, now interestingly, what you can do is you can have a lot of actions that you can take. One of the actions that you'll be taking quite often is connect. There are others as well, obviously, but if I click on the connect, there are a couple of ways how you connect with your EC2 machine. Uh, if you want to connect with an SSH client, of course, you have changed the key pair permission. That is most important thing. I know I've repeated it like a broken record, but it is being asked in the exams. Uh, you need that key pair since we didn't create one. We cannot actually go that. And this is the command that you need to actually just uh, connect with that. So you can just copy it from here. And this is the command uh, SSH, SSH dash I and then IDRSA. And then this is the entire machine that you can get. All right. So by the way, uh, do some Google research as well. And by the way, uh, in this case, the key used to launch this instance is IDRSA. So this is your key name. Uh, private key. That is why this dash i. So this is your key name. And this is assuming that the key is present in the same folder from which you are running this SSH key. Anyways, there are other options. You can also go for the EC2 serial consoles and whatnot. The best way is to click on the EC2 connect and connect using EC2 connect or connect using the connection. And no, I'm just going to go with the first option, public IP. And then uh, all you have to do is click on the connect. 
Once you go ahead and do the connect, notice here in the browser itself, it's establishing a connection with my machine and hopefully it will be spinning up. Now this machine don't have any privileges. We obviously will not be configuring our keys and pairs and all that. Uh, but yes, this gives the ability to actually run all the AWS commands directly up here. Uh, I don't have any AWS configure or something, but this proves the point that this AWS machine has the uh, installation of AWS command line all up here. And once you're done, uh, you can just move on into any of the services. Like for example, let's go back onto EC2. Uh, we can open that in the new terminal. And this is this says that you are in from, this is your own machine, which is running. And it has so much more that you can do. T2 micro, you can set alarms and whatnot. This is it, this is it basically. Just keep in mind the user data and all of that. Uh, now we can actually shut, just close it down, no problem. And then all you have to do is click on this and then you can select the action and then you can actually manage your instance state. This is where you manage them, stop, reboot or terminate. Uh, terminate actually directly stops it and then terminates it. Uh, you can do that all in one steps. It's shutting it down, but if you just do the stop, uh, just this stop instance, you will be billed. You, because the system is provisioning you a machine. Now you can do a quick refresh and that should be shutting it down. And there we go, it's gone. And I can just close it and I'll see this. You'll see this shutting down for a few good minutes and then automatically it cleans the app. Uh, let's do it one more time just for the fun. I'll just click on the launch instance and I'll just go ahead and say my machines. Yes, we'll be firing it up many. I'll be choosing AWS Linux for all of them. This one looks good. We'll be using T2 Micro. And we'll be saying that, hey, proceed without key pair. I don't need to go with that. But by the way, if maybe you want to go SSH and all of that, you can do that. I'll allow only SSH. That's it. We don't touch anything else. This time, I want to spin up uh, three machines. Let's go ahead and hit a launch. And you will notice that how fast I'm able to launch three machines that has all thing installed and everything. Let's go ahead and view this. One is terminated. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. It automatically will go away. Uh, but rest of them are there and we can just go ahead and check. These are all up and running. Yeah. How good this is. This one is running. Now this is pending. This is pending. And comparatively, there we go. Within few seconds, I can run three machines. That is crazy. That is crazy. I spinned up new computers, have system installed, OS installed. Now I can host my applications on them, whatever I need to do. I'll just go ahead and select uh, all of these and we'll say that, hey, I don't want to pay the bill. So I'll just go ahead and go into the instance of terminate instance. And yes, all of them, uh, just go ahead and uh, terminate them. And that's it. We have spent up four computers. Can you believe that within just seconds and minutes? And this is it. This is your entire practical that how you can actually spin up the machines. Don't forget to shut them down. And oh, one more thing I forgot to actually uh, talk about is the metadata. So hey, let's launch up one more machine. It's actually super fast, nothing to worry. And let's talk about metadata. User data we have already seen that only spins up. And uh, yep, we can actually go ahead and select it and launch this. So user data was that uh, small block where you can actually write the code. This uh, That user data runs only when the first machine is getting uh, launched. And there we go, we'll take just a couple of seconds. And by the way, uh, you can just Google this. If you know about what you're searching for, AWS uh, metadata URL, metadata URL, it will land you up on this. So as you can see, yes, I visit this URL quite a number of times. And this is the URL, 169254 and then 169254 latest metadata. So this is what you need. And in the latest version, as you can see, uh, the metadata when we checked off V1 and V2, in the V2, you are uh, supposed to pass these tokens and all these things. So you can just copy this command from here. We don't need it. We are supporting both of them, uh, hopefully, when we launched it, but we'll see that. Okay, uh, we'll see that whether we need it or we need the second command. So let's go ahead and connect with this. All right, so let's go ahead and go with this one. And we need to click on connect. By the way, there are many ways of connecting it. You can click on the machine and click on connect. You can reach onto this information. Okay. And let's go ahead and copy this. This whole URL is what we need. And how we interact with this is a small utility which is present in almost all Linux, which is curl. And if I click enter, it says curl help. That means curl is installed. 
and I can just go ahead and say, can I zoom this? Yeah. Curl and then paste this one. And once you do this, this automatically will bring up the information that what is available. And right now, it's saying that you are unauthorized to do so. That's because we are actually on the version two of it and we need to actually pass on this entire token to grab this information. So we can just copy this and I'll show you the previous way as well. And we can just go ahead and say, hey, we can use the curl and then provide this whole token and enter that. Uh, now you have received the file and all of that, but this is not uh, the way you will be asked in exams. By the way, this actually gives you a simple, if you do a quick LS, uh, not here, actually, this gives you the entire metadata which is received. Oh, bad host name. This is being rejected. Oh, we did a, we did a mistake. <laughs> so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and spin up the EC2 machine with not this much fast uh, things this time. Take a couple of seconds to actually do this. Uh, zoom less. There we go. Let's go ahead and remove this instance. And this one should be terminate. All right. So this one will be terminated now. And in order to get the meta information, we need to launch another instance. This will keep on happening in the behind the scene. Uh, let's call this one as meta attempt two. Come on. Finally, meta attempt two. All right. Uh, rest of the stuff is all good. The only thing we forgot is actually we discussed. Uh, yes, in the advanced section, if I go ahead and all of that, if you remember in the metadata section, uh, we are only going for V2, which is only required, but we need to select V1 and V2, uh, which is which says token is optional. And then we don't have to use these token commands and all of this. This is actually a little bit of involved operation uh, of getting the tokens, setting that up, then getting the information. Don't want to bother you that much for this basic exam. And then we have this one V1 and V2. Then we'll spin up one uh, in new instance. Let's go ahead and launch this one. All right, we'll take just a couple of seconds. This is the fun part. <laughs> I can just go ahead and have so many of these machines. Uh, this probably will take just a couple of seconds. Uh, these are terminated. Don't worry, this will be deleted uh, after that. So we can take the actions. We don't need to take any action now. Uh, this will be gone soon. By the way, if it, this is bothering you, you can just go ahead and click on this. And now that terminated. This should be gone. Oops. Any state? No, I want only the running state. You go away, you go away. Okay, so this is meta attempt two. It is running. Let's click on this one. Nope, not here. Uh, <laughs> click on the instance ID. Click on the connect. Again, we'll be connecting with the same way. And let's copy this one more time. This is on the HTTP. Always remember that it's never on HTTPS. And then we can now zoom in and can say curl. And we grab this information. And now you can see all this information here. This whole thing is available to you. For example, you want to know the host name of it. Uh, you can actually do that by simply saying that, hey, I want to use the same command, but this time I want to go to host name. All these parameters are available for you. And this is my host name. Uh, this host name comes on the same line. This is actually your host name. You can run this command again and can find all these things. We have local IPv4. You don't need to remember all of this. These are available to you on the go. AMI launch index, AMI ID, uh, events, host name, uh, instance ID, and all of this. Just keep an eye on them. Uh, sometimes they are asked that uh, what will give me the instance ID and they give you uh, these IPs, but they are all jumbled up. So they ask them in the exam. All right. So this is it, I guess. Uh, that's all what we need to study for this one. A hands-on lesson. How I hope you have enjoyed this one. Although in this exam uh, and the preparation of exam, there are very less hands-on preparation work, but I'll try my best to give you as much as possible. Uh, that's it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.